Before you head out to the golf course, you need to know what to record while you play and how you are going to record it. This short video will cover both. There are two ways to capture your data, our free iPhone app or our scorecards. The iPhone app is available on the Apple Store. The link on our home page will take you directly to it. Once you have set up an account on the website, even a free trial, you can log into the app. One of the great features about the app is that once you have logged in, you are always logged in unless you purposely log out for some reason. There's a screenshot of our app that allows you to easily record each piece of data on each hole as you play. I highly recommend this method. It is easy. It takes only seconds on each hole. And when you've finished your round, with the click of a button, your work is done. The round is submitted automatically to the website. The second way is to use our scorecards. A PDF is available from our home page under How It Works. This PDF produces a page that prints two scorecards to a standard 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. If you use cardstock, it works quite well. Here's an example of a completed nine hole scorecard. Note the app has you recording the same data. It is just quite a bit easier. This scorecard may look complicated, but it isn't. We've designed the system to require as little work as possible, yet provide the key data that will fuel our unique strokes gained analysis. Further, whether you shoot 65 or 95, you will record virtually the same number of pieces of data. The scorecard covers each part of the game and in the order that you will typically face them on the golf course. Driving, the approach shot, greens and regulation, the short game, chipping and pitching and sand separately, putting, number of putts and distance, and finally your score on the hole. I'll cover each one separately. Driving. The object is to record the result of your tee shot on par 4 and par 5 holes. Our patented system enables players to differentiate between the six basic result categories by number. Fairways hit is obvious. Numbers two through six are the miss categories. In other words, you have missed the fairway, but what is the relative severity of your miss? Two is a good lie, a good opportunity. You're in a good position to accomplish your next goal, be it hit the green and on a par four or advance properly on a par five. Three, a poor lie, poor opportunity. It will be possible for you to accomplish your next logical goal, but you will need a very good shot to do so. Four through six, are the errors. No shot. Your drive has left you behind a tree, under a bush. You cannot proceed normally. It requires some sort of an advancement to get back to normal play. Five is a penalty result, a hazard or an unplayable lie. And six, the worst of all, the stroke and distance penalty, lost ball, out of bounds. Finally note that we X out the par threes as there are no drives on par three holes. Approach shots. This is your attempt to hit a green from 51 yards or greater. First record the distance to the hole, not the distance you think the shot will play due to slope or wind, the actual yardage. All the other factors will even out over time. Also, the website and the app use 25-yard ranges, the same ranges used by the PGA Tour analysis, so you need not struggle with the exact numbers. Next, the position of your approach attempt, either the fairway, tee, rough, or sand. Both the app and the website will prompt the most logical position based upon the result of your drive. Finally, penalties. Indicate those instances when your approach shot resulted in a penalty. You might ask, what if I had a second approach shot? There's no room to record it. Don't worry, the system will know, and the strokes gain calculation for that hole starts with the distance and position of the first attempt, and it ends at the start of the next facet, short game or putting. The distance and position from a second approach shot does not matter. Greens hit in regulation. Simply circle the whole number on greens that you successfully hit in regulation. We recommend one departure from the PGA Tour stance on this stat, that being slight misses either on the fringe or fairway where you are left with what is really a putting opportunity, not a short game shot. We recommend that in these instances, consider it a green in regulation and the next shot a putt. Our system will appropriately reward your long game for having gotten there and not inappropriately reward your short game for what is really a putting opportunity. At the same time, in those cases where you have a short game opportunity but choose to use your putter, record it as a short game shot. The short game, chipping, pitching, Shots within 50 yards of the hole. Record when you have one 
and whether or not it was successful, in other words, it finished on the green. We will know just how successful based upon the distance of the putt that follows. Also record an error, the shot that was chunked short or sculled over the green. Again, misses on the fringe should not be considered errors when the next shot is really a putting opportunity. The distance of the putt is what will be important. Sand is exactly the same as chipping and pitching. It's sand shots from within 50 yards of the hole. Finally, putting. Record the number of putts and the distance of your first putt on each hole. The accuracy of the distance is obviously important to our analysis, and it's easier than one might think to build into your putting pre-shot routine. When you mark your ball, you must pull the flag from the hole. Simply count your paces either to the hole or back to your ball. For those very long ones, you should walk at least halfway to see the slope. Again, count your paces back to your ball. You can measure your actual pace at home or do as I did, practice a 36 inch stride. At 6'1", I had to stride out a bit further than my normal walking stride, but it was easy and it's become a normal part of my pre-shot routine. Finally, I believe that a cognitive sense of the distance will help you be a better putter. You can see the distance, feel the distance by walking at least halfway, and know the the distance. The practiced use of all three senses will build confidence in your distance control. Questions. You can view our most frequently asked questions on our home page. If you have a question that is not covered, you can go to contact us and email me or technical support. Enjoy the program, play well, and above all, have fun.